Hey everybody, this is Anita at Stitch in Heaven and I'm so excited to show you something new today. We're going to work on a fun little project called Sew a Little Love Bug. And these are so adorable. Isn't that cute? He's got little pockets in his wings. And in here, so you can tuck a little sweet little note into the wings or the top of the head here. This is a project that's put out by Creativity Shell, sponsored by Moda. And this is a free pattern. Okay. And everything you need to know is right here in this free pattern. It uses five fat quarters. And then you need four little things for the legs. So all I did was uh, I made my own bias tape and made little strips. And they are about seven inches long. You can do them however long you want. And then I have two little pieces of felt that we're going to use for the eyes. Another option is I did a little fusible applique with some little scrap fabrics for the eyes on here. And I really just think that yellow makes it pop, doesn't it? Okay. So. I'm going to drop a link in the description so that you guys can look up just exactly what this project is about. Um, it is a Creativity Shell is a nonprofit organization that teaches classes um, such as textile arts, cooking, sewing, uh, other creative trades to students in their private studios, library schools, therapy centers, the juvenile justice system, as well as shelters that rescue children from homelessness and human trafficking. So this project came about for youth mental awareness, uh, youth mental health awareness. I'm sorry guys, I get tongue tied. Um, so you can look up more about this project at the link below and let's get started. Okay, so you know, it, this is a great scrap buster. Okay, you can pick any fun little five little fat quarters that you want to use. So I have a white here and I have two kind of grungy looking blues here. And a little polka dot. I think every little ladybug or love bug needs a little polka dot in it. And then black. So if you open the pattern up, okay, there is a template here. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this but there is a fourth of a circle here. So what I did guys was I traced out, I used a regular piece of printer paper, okay? And I traced this little quarter and then I did that twice and I taped them together, okay? And you made a half a circle. Now you could do this four times and make you a full circle. I just did a half a circle because uh, I like to be a little different, I guess. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to decide which fabric is going to be the body. Now the body on here is going to be this area right here. So that's what you're going to see of it when you're done. So this time we're going to use white. We're going to move this aside. Now, I'm going to put the selvage for the fat quarters. Uh, down here towards the bottom, okay? And I'm actually going to go over here and iron out the creases in a minute, but we want to keep this crease line here. Before I started this tutorial, I creased all of my fat quarters in half, so we're going to fold them, as my kids say, hot dog style, okay? <laughs> so, and then I just simply creased them right here. So I'm going to go over here and iron all the wrinkles out, and then we'll get started, okay?
Okay guys, so this last one is going to be the bottom of our love bug, okay, or his belly. And right here, this is his belly. So for the one that we're making today, we're gonna use black for the belly. And we're actually gonna iron this one flat, okay? So we ironed all of the other ones hot dog style and creased the middle. This one we're gonna iron flat. Okay, so we've ironed all of our pieces and now we can get started. This is going to be my head for my little love bug. So we're gonna set that right here because we don't need it yet. These are our two wings. And this is our body. So as you can see, I earned a crease down the middle here. Now actually, all you have to do is iron a crease at the top and bottom because it helps you track where the middle point is, okay? I'm a very visual person, so I like to have that crease all the way through, okay? So then we're going to take our ruler, and it can be any ruler, guys. Um, the one I'm using is uh, eight and a half by uh, 24 and a half. It just needs to be longer than the fabric you're working with, okay? So we're gonna line this up and we're actually, we're going to measure to four inches, okay? So we're gonna make a mark right here and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side over here. And this is just gonna show us where to place our wings, okay? Okay, so we have our wings, and we're going to put the folded edge towards the middle and the selvage at the bottom, okay, or closest to you. Now, we're gonna lay this right over the top of that mark that we just made, and then up here, we're going to overlap slightly over that crease line. That's why we have this crease line. And this is not an exact science, guys, so you can overlap it a little more or a little less than what I'm doing here. This is just to give you an idea so that you can get a sort of even finished project. So, you can kind of see it coming together now. We have our two wings and our body, okay, and now we need the head. So, we're going to put our rough edges towards the top, okay, and we're gonna line this up. You can kind of see right here the edges of my white fabric. We're going to line up the top rough edges of this with the top edges of that white fabric that is our body. Okay? Now we're gonna open our pattern and see what the next step is. So, if you guys can see on the pattern this is the step that we just got done doing right here. So the next step is to lay our backing or our belly. I like to call it the belly, okay? <laughs> we're gonna lay it. And the, all of these were right sides up. Our belly fabric, we're gonna lay right sides down, okay? So that uh, right sides are together. Take this, and again, we're gonna put the selvage. It's got fuzzies. I hate black fabric, guys, because the fuzzies just get everywhere. And I'm just gonna line this up. Okay. And then it says, Lay the template on top of all the pieces so it is centered on the back, uh, on the backing fat quarter. Okay, the center circle should be just below the fold of the head fat quarter in the stack. So we've got our half circle template here. 
and what they mean is, and this is another reason I like taping two together, is because I can kind of see the line where the middle should be. Can you guys kind of see that? You can see the line right down the middle. We're going to line that up with the middle of this fat quarter. And then we're going to go just right below the edges of our head fabric right here. So I've come down about an inch below. It doesn't have to be exact. It does need to be straight, but it doesn't have to be exactly an inch. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to trace around, and then we're going to flip this and trace around down here too, OK? I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, now that we have our circle, I know it's probably hard for you guys to see because I'm using a black fabric, but we have a circle all the way around here, okay? So, we're going to come over here. The next step is down here on step 10, if you're using the pattern, we're going to pin, okay? So, let me get my pins. And we're just going to kind of pin in a circle, whichever way works for you. The point is to just get enough in here to where when we cut out around it, it doesn't move because we don't want our fabric moving, okay? Okay guys, so now that we have our circle pinned, maybe it gives you an idea if you can't see my circle, uh, how big our circle is supposed to be. So if we go to our directions, the next step says cut through your fabrics half inch outside of the drawn pencil line. So we're going to cut around our drawn circle a half inch outside of it, okay? Okay guys, so we're going to have all this scrap left over and we're going to set it aside because you can actually use these scraps for eyes for future little love bugs, okay? So we're going to set those aside. Okay, and as you can see, we have it pinned, okay? We're going to go to our next step. Okay. So the next step is to get your legs, if you want little legs on here. So to do that, you need to determine which end is the head, because we don't want to put legs on his head, okay? <laughs> okay, so this is up for me. This is the top. So I'm going to put the legs about right here, one on each side. I have my little legs here. So I'm actually going to unpin just these two right here. And for these legs, guys, they're just simple little bias tape that I made with scraps. Uh, they're about seven inches long. So we're actually, we're just going to fold these in half like this. Okay. And I know those are short little legs, but Ladybugs have short legs, right? Okay. 
So if you can see, I'm going to put one leg right here. And I'm going to put the other leg about right here. Okay? And then we're going to pin these down. And then we're just going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm just going to eyeball it. This does not have to be perfect. So I'm just going to look and see. Okay, I started about there from the wing. So I'm going to go like this. and look that yeah that's about even. Okay. Then we're gonna look and see, okay I went about that far. So we're going to put our other leg about right here. You actually do not have to do legs on your little ladybug, uh, love bug. My love bug over here does not have legs. You can use rickrack for the legs. You can use ribbon. Uh, like you can do like I did and just use scrap fabric to make some little legs uh, whatever works for you okay so this opening down here at the bottom we're gonna leave this open okay when we go to sew because we have to be able to fit stuffing in here okay so we are going to start here and back stitch and sew all the way around and come back to about here and back stitch. Okay, you can mark these points if you would like to. Some people like to. So, I like to start and stop a little bit past the wing. It says in the pattern five inches. And then I have my little lines that I'm going to start and stop on. So the next step, you're going to sew right on this line that you drew. Okay. And don't forget to leave your opening open and don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay. Be right back.
Okay. So now we have sewn our circle, okay? And we have left an opening down here at the bottom. Our next step says that we need to clip the edges of our seam allowance to reduce the bulk. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can use pinking shears to go around the edge. You can just trim a little closer to the edge. You can trim notches into it. Whatever your style is, it really doesn't matter. Um, I don't have any pinking shears with me today, so I am just going to trim close to the edge. But I am going to leave this seam allowance right here where we're going to be turning in a minute because it makes it a lot easier to close this seam if you have a nice half inch seam allowance here. Okay? So we are just going to cut right here and then we're going to trim all the way around. Okay? We're just going to trim close to that line that we sewed. Do not cut into the line that you sewed though. Um, that would be a disaster. You'd have to re-sew it. Okay, does everybody kind of see how I left this seam allowance here? That just makes it a lot easier. So we're going to take our pins out. And you guys will have to forgive me because I just realized that we forgot to do something. But, you know, tutorials do not always go perfectly perfect. We forgot to put the eyes on. But we're going to do that in just a minute. that black fuzz everybody you see that so I'm actually going to iron this before I turn it um, just because I think it'll make it look better Just a little press, nothing major. We're just going to pull it through. Okay, we have our little legs. Okay. And what I like to do is I like to take this end of my little marking tool here. And I like to come in here and just kind of run it around the edges. Okay. You can use a number of things to do that. Um, you can use a marking tool like I do. Clover has a special tool that you can use for that. You can use a purple thing if you want to. Um, just whatever your preference is. So another step that we're actually going to do right now is we're going to iron down these edges here. Okay, you can see they're kind of sticking out right now. We want to iron those down so that it makes it easier to close them after we get done stuffing it. 
okay? So you don't want to try to be ironing these after you've put the stuffing in there. Um, trust me from bad learned experience, it doesn't work as well. <laughs> so go ahead and iron it now so that you'll already have that crease there when you get ready to close it. And actually the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put on our little eyes, okay? A lot of people do this step before they actually put this together. Um, I found that if I'm not looking at it completed, then it's hard for me to visualize where the eyes need to go. So if you do it this way, you can still get in here, okay, before you stuff it. See, there's lots of opening here. So if you're, if you're hand sewing this on or even on the machine, it's easier to get in here uh, before it's stuffed. Obviously, it's probably easier to do it before you put it together, but my mother tells me I've always been the difficult one and I like to do things the difficult way. <laughs> but if you can see here, now that he's put together, we can kind of look at him and determine where we want these eyes to be. See, normally I would have put them right there and I just think that that's too far apart. You can kind of eyeball this, whatever you think looks best. We're gonna put ours right about here. So I actually have sticky on the back of these that I'm going to use. Um, you can use heat and bond, you can use buttons, but please, if you use buttons, please only use ones that are at least an inch big and be sure that you use a heavy duty thread to attach them and that you attach them really well. We don't want any children choking on buttons. We are going to sew these down after we attach them. We're almost done with our love bug, guys. Are you guys excited? These are such fun little projects to do and for such a good cause. Okay, and we have our little love bug's eyes. So I'm actually going to take him over here and I'm going to press down the edges here. I'm going to press down this middle crease here and I'm going to press a crease right here so that we can sew him closed later. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay guys, so we have sewn around the edge, we have sewn a little seam allowance here, folded it in and ironed it. I said sewn the edge, we didn't sew the edge, we already did that, we ironed the edge. But we are ready to finish sewing the eyes on, you can do this by hand or by machine, and then we're ready to stuff him. Okay? So <laughs> what I used for stuffing in my little love bug was our Sweet Dreams 100% cotton stuffing. Um, in my opinion, it's a lot better than fiber fill, poly fiber fill. This stuff is not as lumpy and it just feels softer to me. You know, if you wanna give a little love bug to a child, they love to have things that are super soft and squishy and this stuff is just perfect. We're gonna drop a link to our Sweet Dreams batting and I'll show you what the package looks like. Okay guys, so we have ironed our little love bug. We have ironed the edges and the seam allowance down here. We are ready to sew the eyes on and to stuff him. And this is what the package looks like. Okay, it does look a little different than polyfiber fill. Um, obviously it has a more natural color to it, but in my opinion is so much better. So. Are we excited to make a love bug, guys? 
You can actually make these love bugs and drop them off here at Stitch in Heaven. We're going to have a box in the front of the store. So you and your friends get together, get your kids involved, you know, and make little love bugs and drop them in our donation box. We'll be distributing them to kids that could really use them. Do not forget to write you a little encouraging note to slip in the pocket here before you drop it off. Um, it may be have a good school year. It may be, you know, just any kind of encouraging word that you can leave for these kids. I uh, know they'd appreciate it. Just slip it in one of the pockets here. And uh, thank you guys for joining me today. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.